Sue Ellie and I'm speaking to you at the Virtual Benedetti Sessions. Welcome to my second tutorial for the Advanced Cello. And today we are going to look at the Paganini 24th Caprice. So we'll make a good start and I'll cover everything that we need to just get us started on that. Um, so the piece is actually originally written for solo violin and uh, at the time which was over, 200, was over 200 years ago, um, the piece was considered to be the hardest piece ever written for solo violin. It involves, you know, fingered octaves, um, spiccato, I mean, all the technical wizardry you could possibly imagine it, it's in this piece for the violin. Um, but you'll be relieved to know that our arrangement is spread out over many different parts throughout the orchestra, so much more manageable. Um, and it's actually a very popular piece and I'm sure, well I hope you've all listened to it by now and recognise it, um, but it's, it's, uh, it's been arranged by many musicians worldwide into different genres, into popular culture, um, as well as um, yeah, string orchestra. Um, and I actually I personally remember it's a theme tune, it was used as a theme tune for the South Bank show back in the 80s, shows my age anyway. Um, it, the piece itself is written in theme and variations form and this is perfect for us because it gives us so much scope to look at different instrumental techniques as well as explore different moods and um, yeah, very exciting indeed. So this particular arrangement has been made by the Ayub sisters, very talented pair who, uh, those of you who were at the Glasgow course uh, back in January earlier this year, um, we'll remember them well from then. And they tell me that they've had an awful lot of fun um, basically spreading the melodic material and the themes throughout all the different sections of the orchestra. So um, yeah, they'll, every, single, every single member um, of the orchestra will have their moment to shine. So that's quite exciting. Anyway, before we launch in, um, I just want to mention that um, all the tutors have been putting out warm-up um, videos for you all. So I hope you've um, dipped into all of them. Um, th there'll be a link below this um, where you can um, have, a, have a listen and a, a watch and, and do. Um, and I highly recommend it because it's only, literally it's, it's only a couple of minutes um, of your time plus it's so important to warm up our bodies and our minds before we sit down at the instruments and uh, get going. Um, I kind of think of us as like athletes and uh, we need to limber up. So these warm-ups are super important. Okay, so let's take it as read that we've done that. Um, and um, I'm, yeah, as I say, I'm very excited about um, doing this piece with you because it really is a lot of fun and we'll be covering there's a lot of bowing techniques to be covered and also um, we'll work on getting more agility into our left hand so um, yeah great well let us look at the theme I'll just talk a little bit about the importance is I mean throughout all music that we play in orchestras um, the importance of listening essentially it's a real art to, um, to, there's so much for us anyway, to work out on our instrument, make sure that we're playing in the right, playing in tune and time, and uh, there's so much to think about while we're playing. But um, if you want to be a really good orchestral player, then you need to listen to everything that's going on in all the different areas of the orchestra. Um, so there's always one ear out, uh, that things that are happening, and um, in this case, in this case, I guess there's a me melody that's going to be passed around the orchestra. So Karina, our conductor, will help us greatly because she'll um, gesticulate. Plus, you can hopefully listen to all the parts as they come towards you. Um, now, if we were in an actual sectional together, I would be testing you out to find out who has been listening in the full rehearsal um, or who's been studying the score or um, to see who plays the melody when. We have eight bars rest at the beginning, for instance, and I'd be set saying to you, okay, 10 points for who, who, is, who starts. Um, but I'm gonna do your homework for you and tell you 
that uh, it starts with the violin section, the big violin section, one and two. So um, they'll start with a melody and then you'll hear it pass on to um, just the vi first violins will drop out, the second violins and violas will continue. And then the next round, next four bars later, is our turn. So and the second violins drop out and it's violas and cellos. So um, really we need to always be thinking about like passing the baton in a relay race and things have to be well oiled uh, like a well oiled machine so you need to be ready to start and like it's like m getting onto a moving train especially when the m the theme is quite fast and quite lively so um, you'll remember it i mean you'll recognize it um uh, when you hear it but dum da 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 dum ba da 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 dum da 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 dum dum i've got i'm a terrible singer so um but essentially that's that's the melody and when it comes to your turn you we need to get on board as as quickly as possible um or as in time as possible so you kind of need to already be internally playing um certainly singing but pretending you're playing the actual melody that is coming before you so let's just start with um, the position of where we start. We're starting on a second finger, and we're uh, second bar. Second bar, we will shift to a four on the F. But what we want to do is just make sure that the, you're aware that your hand is shifting all the way down, actually theoretically to a D, where the fourth finger lies over the D. So. so change to a second one and then so you're shifting from can you hear that so and now join them up another thing to be aware about is the articulation of the bow so you semiquavers which are 16th notes so there'll be four and what I would like us to avoid is just being a bit lazy about how we articulate that it's quite easy just to go Often we'll be playing with other people playing four, so make sure you subdivide. One, two, three, four, one, two, instead of one, two, three, one, two, no lazy, no lazy sixteenths. So uh, the articulation that happens in the first finger, so it's nice when it's um, as clean as possible in the left hand. same articulation the other direction so stop one two three four one two three four one um very good moving on to variation one um and again it's real and this is where karina the conductor will be helping you a lot but in your head you need to subdivide constantly these semiquavers which are the 16th notes will be running throughout this whole variation uh, one thing that will help us with the running semiquavers sem uh, these 16th is that if we um, have a nice concise bowing so not too much bow um, so we don't need to use loads of bow no full bows needed here so you know, nice punchy um, very small bows so one one it's about keeping a nice st 
steady dead little 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 all the all the running the running sixteenth is really important to keep constant in your head. Um, it's worth doing all of this with a metronome. Um, and the other thing that might be tricky is to get the um, sixteenths the semiquavers in uh, even. So when we get to, for instance, when we get to the end and we actually have the melody. Uh, which is in the last four bars. We we join the melody only really in the last four bars of the uh, variation. That little bit there. It's sometimes just to work on getting really even, so they're not not um, jaunty. Is that um, the way to practice them is actually to practice them in very tight rhythms. So you're controlling when your fingers go down rather than uh, your fingers controlling when they want to go down independently. So um, let's just, when you've got the running semiquavers, these, these 16ths, a nice little trick that I do so many times um, if I feel like I'm not fully in control um, is to put them into rhythms, dotted rhythms. So this is a little, um, little neat trick. So uh, if you number, if you were to number every, um, every 16th in each beat, um, because there's four, one, two, three, four, and what we're going to do is elongate all the ones, um, and then speed up the two, three, four, but in a rhythm, in time. So. Do you hear what I'm doing? Just elongating the first of each beat. So one, uh, one, two, one, two, three, four, one. So, and then what we're going to do is elongate the second of each group and then elongate the third and fourth. So the second would sound like this. should be able to, theoretically, you, if you've done them enough times, you should actually be able to play all of them at the fastest speeds that you were doing uh, the, the, the fastest notes. So, and they should be much more even than when you started. So um, that's, that's the way I practice um, just getting evenness through running, running sixteenths. Um, so just to... Um, recap a little bit on that variation is um, is the accents concise bows so one one so I'm only literally using up until the silver threads on my bow and really nice heavy heavy arm uh, for the accents Moving on to variation two. Variation two is all about bowing. Bowing. So this bowing is is about this stroke. So really feeling all those empty beats. So two. Quavers are all being played by different members um, of the orchestra. So you will hear bum, 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 bum. So you'll hear those filled in. So just make sure you don't push them or rush them and stay with the conductor. So, so bum, 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 bum. 
bum 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 so really really try and feel that absolutely firmly in your body um, and the the way it's done um, so nice nice soft even though there's it's strong and heavy soft fingers and bring the weight out but don't leave the string so leave your bow um, you just articulate and then lighten it off and then it, the place where it rests and again not too much bow uh, the weight's out you just add another says forte that you don't use too much bow again so I just practice the bowing itself and in a way try and move the bow in terms of it's not don't panic about trying to retake um, just use a small amount of bow nice and heavy relaxed hand um, but try and move it slowly, meaning the speed of the bow itself is not moving too fast. It's not, not uh, moving the bow very fast. It's as slow as you can in the time. So, um, as for the left hand, it's not... Uh, basically, you're always constantly keeping the first finger down. Which is fine, but you've got... suggest is that you just practice with your first finger down the hardest one is when you have to lift up for the open string a but then go down for the b that's the only position change so so have a nice round finger for the e a and then for the e b flat just go back and practice that and then the uh, the actual so all you need to do is flatten just for the fifth the other thing um, is with the um, pizzicato they're super soft but I um, I just do a, a thumb and second finger so you've got hold of your bow with the first and the fourth and it frees up these fingers just to Nice rounded left hand so you don't dampen the G string. And get so this um, just practice going from to just make sure you don't drop your bow. So it's just about finding that position to that position, that position to that position. You can just try that a few times. Go from there to that. Always nice soft. You you could almost drop your bow. Uh, meaning it's try and find a way where I just turn it inwards like that so you're going from position of holding to turning it in and just getting your thumb over the other side and then you don't have to grip it too hard and it's about just remaining nice and loose so from on variation three is keeping the bow speed nice and slow so and trying um, in some ways just slowing the bow down but keeping the rhythm nice and fast um, and then just practicing going between plucking and bowing um, and that sh should be good uh, and certainly and also rounded fingers and flat fingers so just going from rounded to flat fingers um, okay, so variation four now. Um, so the trem, um, in case anyone has had trouble finding it, you just, you're playing the A string and you're just touching the E very gently and you'll get the octave above. 
the natural harmonic. So the, the thing about trem is just to keep the hand super light touch. Um, and just find the balance point. So you should, you can experiment with where you are and then find the middle ground so you feel nice and comfortable that you can do this for quite a long time and not get tired. If you do get tired, always take a break. Nothing should ever hurt. So um, if anything ever does, just take a break, shake it out, stretch your thing, stretch your body a bit, um, and then come back. So is this, as, I guess as fast as you can without getting tight. So the idea is not to grip and shake as fast as you can. It should just be a loose thing, just almost like loosen up the elbow, loosen up the wrist, loosen up the fingers and then almost on the spot, just a little. Uh, the thing about trem is that because there's, it's not exactly measured, sometimes um, you can get out of time. So just make sure your internal clock and your visual clock with Karina, um, the conductor, is working so that... E <laughs> moving in a rest or go into a rest from playing so one two off two one so really be strict about when you start and stop your trem uh, it should be noted that at the beginning of variation four there's a drop in tempo so we're coming down to quatre equals 60 uh, so much slower uh, there'll be some glissando so um, in other parts but I'd like us to stay like super tight rhythmically. So even though this is unmeasured, two, one, and one, two, that I'd like those really in time and the rests really silent. So from one, uh, sorry, one, two, off, two, off, two, and then just at the end of the variation, there's a writ. Um, which again is this is going to bring us into the new tempo and get us um, get us ready for variation five. Um, now I don't know if you realise this, but variation five is our variation cello and bass. We get our moment to shine. Uh, this is all about us. It's the slowest variation, so it's all about melody, nice, thick, beautiful, um, warm, expressive sound. So we're just going to make sure that our bow, bowing is as legato as we can make it. Um, so um, just think of it as like sticking, sticking to the string and no bulges or anything. Um, and the other thing is, is the whole movement, is, uh, the whole variation is not purely about us. At some points we have the melody and some points we have counter melody. Um, and um, other people take over the melody. So it's a, let's be aware of that. Um, as I said, I'm doing your homework for you. Um, we've got the melody for the first four bars, and then for the next four, we, are, we move into the, sub, um, to the counter melody, and then back up to the melody, which we will hold for a whole eight bars, and then give ourselves over to um, counter melody again for four bars, and then we finish the last four bars, everyone all together playing the melody. So just to be aware of that and listen out for your colleagues. So um, I guess I'm about to do a sectional on this so I can do more um, like precise things like fingerings, um, uh, more detailed I guess um, in the sectional bit. So let's see if it's one, two. Thank you. 
commenting on is as legato in the bow as well as the fingers in some ways so left hand that is um, and um, just trying to keep as even speed of semiquavers which are the 16th notes as possible as well so I don't know if you noticed when I was dropping back in dynamic and, and um, intention um, during the, um, the passages where we went to counter melody and try and fill out as much as possible the melody itself. So the first four bars. So one, two. that you try and prepare them a little earlier so do you see that before I play the E that my arm is slightly preparing it before so and again when I do the octave already just make sure that you um, your when you're going up, you lean also into those because they're quite expressive. Sorry. Yeah. And this one, you have to really hurl yourself. Just because you've got two strings to get over. just the last four bars this is where everyone plays together <laughs> watch out is the second beat uh, the second beat gives you the new speed um, so be prepared that it's faster um, and you are you are the kind of the funky element of it because you'll get you give the first downbeat you'll hear a second beat and then you preempt what we call push the downbeat so it comes a uh, semiquaver uh, 16th notes before the downbeat so um, we are basically going to be one big samba band um, playing a, a South American clave rhythm, it's wonderful. So um, um, we're basically the big bass drum. The second beat's are super important. So two, this is one, two. So 
what we're doing is we're just preempting the every other downbeat. So one, you, if you think of it as one, two, three, four, 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 one, two, two, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, two. So that's basically what we're playing, um, but the main rhythm, ba 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 ba. So we we um, we'll just provide the baseline for that, um, and again, I'd like us to just concentrate on having like super tiny bows, so small compact. So um, one, two, two, boom, one. Just be two, one, two, two. But where's the fun in that? So one, two, 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 and then try in your head. You can al almost, uh, in some ways, it's quite good to practice the whole rhythm. So, so I'll just do it on one note. solid downbeats um, so great stuff um, and the only thing is on the last uh, there's a just the last thing that we say in that in that variation um, is a, a thing that the whole of the advanced orchestra plays in rhythmic unison so um, it's a bit trickier so if we slow it down one two three four 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 so mm. One two three four one two three four one two three four one two three four one. That's the rhythm. Mm. And that little line coming down is just everyone's gonna do a nice heavy just to nothing. We don't have far to to, to shift anyway. So now mm. we're on to the finale, which is basically back to the main the main theme as it was. Uh, but this time it's got a few more intricate rhythms. So it's a bit more complicated than it was than as it was presented at the beginning. Um, so um, what we'd like to achieve is some agility. There's more agility in the right hand and the left hand. I often do this thing where I just play the correct string in the correct time, but without the left hand. So you just get your your right hand gets used to um, to what shapes it needs to do and what awkward things it needs to do without the left, having to worry about the left hand. And it's also good just to um, um, separate the left and the right once in a while. So this is going from bar 153 on the C sharp that you, from the... So the, um, the bowing has, we've got that same... It's kind of a hooked, I don't know if you'd call that martelet, together a one two one Just get your head moving in a 
your mind is moving and knowing where your fingers are moving so knowing which string you need to do um, and it's just a lovely exercise um, that just separates that and then once you've got that feeling good and solid um, is just adding the left hand so from the same place let's add the left hand uh, in itself the left hand is not hard it's just the combination of the string crossing so now we separated out the string crossings we'll put them together so two one <laughs> Should, that basically should give you a, a good um, starting point for all these things. I'll go over, into, uh, go over it, it all in much more detail in the section of itself. Um, but if you have any questions and you're enrolled in the sectionals, I'm, I'm, I'm hoping that you should be able to um, write your questions in the chat box and we'll get back to them as soon as we can. Um, and also just to say that, um, you know, if you have any questions at all and you can't get through, then please just take it to your teacher, your personal teacher, and um, discuss how, uh, ways of making it work for you um, and share the experience. Um, and if you are, if you are practicing, we encourage you, not if you are, you will be practicing, um, but when, when you've been practicing, um, we encourage you to share video clips of yourself um, practicing these things and just um, tag that um, hashtag uh, Benedetti sessions that should be great we'll get them and um, I also encourage you to listen you can google um, Paganini Caprice number 24 and look at the videos and just explore some of the wondrous arrangements that are out there um, and it's really fun. It's really and let your imaginations run free with it. It's such a wonderful piece, um, and I mean it's tricky. So do um, just just be very kind to yourself when you're practicing. Be patient, as I always say, and uh, just persevere. Um, and hope you have fun above all. So um, look forward to the next one and see you then.